Next, I want to draw the conveyor. I'm going to double click on path. And I will just draw roughly my conveyor into that area. This space markup unit I'm going to call space as well and I'm going to call it conveyor bodies. This time I want to have it made visible and in its appearance there is a nice option that they've already pre-programmed called a conveyor so that my markup unit will actually look somewhat like a conveyor. I can change the color, the width. For now I'm going to leave that uh, default. Save the model. And I should now be able to tell my bodies the cue where to actually put those agents. The capacity I'm going to keep 100, which is standard. The entity location, if I click on my drop down box, it will provide me all of my space markup. Uh, elements that might be considered appropriate in this case. So there you see both space body storage, space conveyor bodies, and I want it to be put into space body storage. That's one way of selecting it. Alternatively, you can click on the icon and it will highlight in your model area all of the elements that you can actually pick with your mouse should you wish. The queuing will be based on a first in first out principle. Uh, we're not going to set the timeout or the preemption right now. And at this point, we, will not going, we, we are not going to add any of the particular agents. In my conveyor bodies, the type of entity that will be moved along the conveyor is called entity type. Um, in this case, it's the default agent. The length should be specified by the path, so that line will actually represent uh, the distance of the conveyor. We'll, we will make sure that the scale is correct in just a minute. The speed, I'm going to change it here. I want the speed to be one meter per second. What does 10 mean? We don't know what the unit of measure um, actually is. So before we carry on, it might be appropriate to just look at the scale and actually set the scale of our model. There is a nice functional bit in any logic called the scale object. So I'm just going to click and drag it. It is also in my space markup um, tab on the palette. And I'm just going to draw, um, drag it over into my model somewhere close to the scale that is provided on the layout. I'm going to zoom in so that I can get a little bit more control. And I'm going to try and stretch the scale. It happens to also be already five meters. And I'm going to try and make it as accurate as possible. That would be pretty good. I'm not going to change the name. I'm going to leave a default scale, but I do not want it necessarily to be visible. It tells me that the length of the scale is 53. The scale is defined graphically and the ruler length, which is the entire length of that ruler, corresponds to five meters, which is what I see on the scale. And it also turns out to be exactly what I need. So I'm going to leave that. It, it should be five meters. So I now know that this is expressed in terms of, of five meters. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to add a variable so that I can refer to the length of, of that scale much easier. On my general tab in my palette, I will find a variable and I'm just going to drag it to my model space. Like all variables, I start with the prefix var. 
and this variable I'm going to call variable meter. It, I don't mind if it is visible for this time. The type I will leave default to double. And what I want to do is I want this variable to correspond to the scale so that I can easily convert pixels to meters because the length of my conveyor, for example, will be expressed in terms of pixels. The initial value should be taken from that scale object that I've just added. So I start, start typing scale, press control space, it'll pop up a little window and there you actually see the first option that I can choose is the object scale, uh, which is the name of the object that I've, that I've added. To know what methods are available, I press full stop or dot, press control space again. And then you, the first option actually tells me, get the number of pixels per unit. And I know that the unit of the scale is currently in meters. So I can just choose that option. And now I see that there are two options. I must either provide it with an agent or I can provide it with length units. I'm going to choose length units. Oh, I just start typing length unit and it automatically picks up that there is length unit centimeter, length unit foot. Uh, oh sorry, it is um, plural length units. And there's also an enumeration class called length units. But there is one in meters, which is probably what I will be interested in. I have a fair idea of, of what that value should be. So we can just check it afterwards. I can save my model. Go back to my conveyor. Sorry, my conveyor block. And the speed I want to be one meter per second. So I'm going to change that to one. But the length of this conveyor is now in pixels defined by the path of that space markup variable. So what I want to do is convert that uh, pixel length to meters. I'm start typing my variable name, press control space. So it should be one variable meter, however many pixels that should be per second. Start typing SEC, control space, and the first method that pops up is second. This is useful in the sense that even though I will later on possibly change my time units from seconds to minutes in the model, this speed will always de be defined in terms of meters per second. And the entity location, if I click on my drop down box, it actually picks up that there is a space conveyor bodies, which is path, which is typically what you would associate a conveyor with. And I select that. And it tells me that the entities that move along that block should also be associated with that space markup view. Not going to change any um, of the actions, not going to set any actions. What I do want to do is actually change the entity's length. The default is 10 units, which is probably 10 pixels because there's no unit of measures uh, specified. I'm going to change that to actually say this unit is about half a meter. So I'm like 0 0.5 times variable control space variable meter. I can save my model and I should now have a model that when I run it, I actually see smarty colored dots, which is the default animation for the default um, agent type, appear and moving along the conveyor. If there is not space for them on the conveyor immediately, you'll actually see that they accumulate in the body storage area. 
until they can find space on the conveyor and then they move on. Currently, when the entities leave the conveyor, it is com immediately destroyed. So once they leave the, um, the area on the animation, they also don't appear or move anywhere else. And here at the bottom, I can actually see that my variable meter is 10.6, which means every 10.6 pixels will actually represent um, a meter. And for now, I can close the model so we can carry on with the rest of the logic.